Yeah, hello, good morning. Uh, it's actually just going to be me. Emanuel is instead giving a talk at Gnome Asia, so um, today it's just me. And I'll be talking about uh, GTK4. Um, before I start, I want to say that um, I've given a similar talk at Guadec a few months ago, and if you've been at that talk, uh, the first half of my presentation will be fairly familiar to you, but um, if you hang on, uh, the demo section will be all new and fun. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, yes, we've been working on GTK4 for quite a while now. Um, looking back uh, when preparing for this talk, um, I noticed that we did the 3.89.1 release, which was the first um, in our 4.0 development. Uh, that happened in November 2016, so it was actually four years ago. And since then, we've racked up almost uh, 18,000 commits. Um, but now GTK4 is, is basically almost here. We are up to 3.99.4, and uh, we will do the 4.0 release within the next, I guess, two or three weeks. And it's time to um, take a look at what we have to offer. There have been a few um, brave early adopters uh, during our four years of uh, unstable development. We've done um, test ports of various applications. Um, for example, there was a Nautilus port around our 396 release. And later on, George's ported GNOME to do uh, to 3.98. And we were very lucky to uh, observe him trying to use our new drag and drop API. And uh, thanks to that, uh, our drag and drop API ended up looking a bit different than we thought initially. And um, it's much better. And since we've started doing our 3.99 uh, releases, uh, more people have taken a look and given us valuable feedback. And GTK4 will be much better due to all of you, everybody who um, took a look at what we had um, while it was still unstable deserves a big thank you. And um, yeah, uh, what I will do in this uh, presentation is to highlight uh, some of the things that are new in GTK4 and that maybe were not possible to do in GTK3. But uh, before I do that, um, I wanted to um, uh, take a moment and look at the principles that have been uh, guiding our development and the changes we've done. So you have some idea uh, of um, why things have changed in the way they have. And let's see if this works. Um, yes. So um, one of the general principles uh, um, and general direction of our API changes has been to emphasize uh, delegation over subclassing. If you want, uh, you could call this lessons learned from Clutter. And one of the motivations for this is to make writing uh, your own custom widgets easier and less error prone. And as a consequence of uh, this direction, you will see a lot more auxiliary objects in, uh, in our APIs that take over certain aspects of functionality from the core widget classes. Another consequence is that many of our widgets are now final, so you cannot derive from them anymore. Instead, uh, we expect that you will derive directly from the widget, which has become a lot easier than it was in GTK3. Another general trend is that um, everything is a widget. That has already started in GTK3 many years ago. We first started um, with introducing CSS nodes, and then we introduced gadgets uh, as another uh, way of breaking up widgets into uh, their components. And now in GTK4, um, we have completed this transition. And for example, if you look at a GTK scale, the trough and the slider of a scale are fully formed sub-widgets, which maintain their own style and their own state. And they can receive input like any other widget. A big loser in, in the GTK4 transition is uh, the GTK container base class. It has become uh, much less important. Any widget can have uh, child widgets now and child properties, which is something that GTK container used to provide, have been replaced by layout children and their properties. And all the focus handling has been moved from GTK container to GTK widget. So when we were done with all of these changes, uh, GTK container that really have no functionality left. So in fact, we just uh, removed the class altogether. Um, yeah, another big loser in, uh, in these changes is GTK window. In GTK3, um, all the pop-ups, 
such as entry completions, menus, tooltips, and, and things like that. They were all using a GTK window underneath. And in GTK4, most of them have been uh, converted to use popovers or at least a pop-up surface. And uh, the popover implementation itself has been untangled from GTK window and made its own uh, freestanding widget. And in addition, many pieces of functionality that are specific to top level windows, such as um, um, handling of, of sizes and handling of uh, window decorations have been moved out into separate interfaces, such as GTK root or GTK native, or into their own widgets like GTK window handle or GTK window controls. On the um, GDK level, we've moved from modeling our abstractions on X11 concepts to following Wayland. As a consequence, we now have surfaces instead of windows, and things like screens or visuals or explicit grabs are all gone from the API. And we're also moving away from the uh, complex hierarchy of input devices that X input has and have a, a much simpler setup for devices. This should not affect applications uh, too much, but it does affect GDK backends, and it, in fact, should make it a lot more straightforward to write GDK backends. And um, as a sign of things to come in that area, we do have a new backend for OS X, which uh, still needs some love and nurturing, but it, it does look like a promising start. Right, um, moving on from, from the principles, um, to surprises. With every big change, and the change from GTK3 to GTK4 is certainly very big, there are some uh, surprises and unexpected changes that you did not anticipate and that might hold you up much longer than they should when you ported an application from GTK3 to GTK4. So I, I figured it would be a good idea to um, point some of these out upfront so you, have, you are prepared. And the first surprise is um, that widgets are visible by default now. That's, this is one of a number of API changes uh, where we've made, uh, where we just changed defaults that were wrong before to the expected value. If you create a new widget, uh, you typically want it to be visible, so it makes a lot of sense to have um, the visible property defaulting to true. But if, if one of your UI files inexplicably looks different in GTK4 than it uh, used to be in, in GTK3, then you may want to check if it contains any widgets um, that were never visible in GTK3 because you just forgot to set visible to true. And in GTK4, all of those will, will just show up. Surprise number two is that uh, GTK container is gone. I already mentioned that. Um, this can require some work if you are creating your UIs manually. There's a certain style of UI creation code where you always call GTK container add on boxes, windows, and similar containers. And all these calls have to be replaced by their respective uh, non-generic counterparts. For example, GDK box now has a GDK box append function and uh, all the widgets which just uh, have a single child widget like GDK window or GDK frame, they uh, have a set child API that replaces the generic uh, container add function. That's admittedly a change that can be a little annoying to deal with. Um, but the good news is uh, if you're using GTK Builder for your UI, you are not affected by that at all because um, the child element in UI files works uh, just the same as before. GTK Builder UI files are affected by some other changes, for example, that uh, child properties are being replaced by layout properties. But we have a tool called um, GTK4 Builder tool that uh, can help you adapt to that if you... Um, if you run the, use the simplify command of GTK4 builder tool and you pass the dash dash three to four option um, to this command, it'll try to rewrite a GTK3 UI file to the syntax expected in GTK4. The tool is not perfect and you should always verify what it produces and uh, pay attention to the warnings that it spits out. But um, during GTK4 development, we've run, run this over all the UI files in GTK several times. And it works reasonably well. Um, so that's definitely something you uh, should keep in mind if you have, an, have a GTK3 application that needs porting. 
All right, um, with that, I'll change gears a little bit and uh, try to share my screen. I hope that works, and I will show uh, some demos. Before I do that, uh, I wanted to say that uh, in my Grodek version of this talk, I, I showed minimal test cases as demos that uh, were showing how you do layout, rendering, and input in GTK4, and I walked uh, brought you through the code. If you're interested in, in that thing, you can find those demos on, on GitLab, or you can just watch the recording of that that talk I gave, uh, but I'm um, since then since since I gave that talk, we've worked pretty hard on on adding nice examples to GTK demo. Uh, so today I want to just uh, show some of those those demos to give you an impression of uh, what GTK four can do that was not possible in GTK three. And with that, I'll try to share my screen. I hope this works. Okay, sorry for that uh, strobe effect. I have no idea how to avoid that with big blue button, but I hope you can see um, uh, the GDK demo window now. Um, there's a lot of demos in this and a lot of new demos, so if, if you think you know what's in here, it's worth taking another look. Uh, as I said, we've worked pretty hard on, on uh, producing some demos that are maybe a little more interesting. I want to start out by showing a few demos um, about uh, layout managers. Layout managers are one of those auxiliary objects that I mentioned earlier that we kind of inherited uh, from Clutter. And every widget uh, has a layout manager that basically is responsible for controlling how the child widgets are placed on screen. And here's um, a simple uh, layout manager demo. It's basically a, a widget that has child widgets that are placed in a, in a grid. The layout manager determines the positions of the child widgets. And they look just like color blobs, but they are actually widgets which have tooltips, tool um, as you can see here. And if I if I click my mouse button here, you can see that the layout changes and the, the child widgets get rearranged in a circle now. And I can actually undo that and do it again. So that's fun to play with. Um, we don't have uh, a full-grown animation framework in GTK4 yet, but uh, simple transitions between uh, layouts like this are very doable with just a tick callback, as this demo shows. Um, so basically what the layout manager here does is it computes uh, the position of the children in both these layouts, both for the grid and for the circle. And then um, we have a tick callback that interpolates between those two positions for each child. And um, if you have ever played with the, the Clutter demos, this may look familiar to you. This is a pretty direct translation of uh, the Clutter Layout Manager demo um, that I did. And I think it does a good job of showing that it's pretty easy to position child widgets in a, uh, on a 2D canvas. But um, one of the things that are, that are new in GTK4 is that we actually have a full 3D scene graph and uh, 3D transformations between children. So after I did this, um, the translation of this Clutter demo, I thought I wanted to show off uh, transformations that are a little less trivial than uh, just uh, what this demo showed. So I, I spent a weekend writing another uh, layout manager demo with transformations. That's this one. Um, again, the, the ingredients are the same here. This is just a container which uh, has a bunch of child widgets. Um, in this case, they are icons. And all the magic is in the layout manager that computes um, how to place these child widgets into our scene graph. And in this case, it uh, places them on the surface of a sphere. And um, I thought I'd make this demo a little more interesting by also adding key nav. So if I click the arrow keys here, um, you can move things around and see that actually reacts. So that is uh, fun to play with. And yeah, maybe I can do a little uh, interaction here, I'll bring up the um, GTK inspector because I wanted to quickly show you that um, these are actually uh, widgets that are responsive to input and um, it's not just uh, a movie. And to show that, I can turn on a hover effect and you can see that, that all of these widgets actually receive input as I move my mouse over the window. Um, they get hovered. All 
Right. Um, maybe that's enough uh, for layout managers, and I'll move on to the next big topic, which is um, um, another big thing that we added to GTK for is uh, support for model-based list widgets. We eventually want these to replace uh, GTK Tree View and and GTK Combo Box and and so like. We're not quite there yet, but um, this is what we have. This is a column view um, that, that shows uh, what our list, our model-based list widgets can do. The model in this case uh, contains uh, the content of the Unicode character database, so that's roughly 33,000 items. And you can uh, you can scroll around here and you can select things and you can explore um, explore this and find characters you never knew existed. So that's that's a fun thing to do. And uh, as far as the widget is concerned, you can see that um, it does have functionality that you expect from a from a column list. You can like resize the columns and you can reorder the columns. We also have support for uh, for sorting by column and for filtering that this demo does not show yet. Um, so you can obviously do do exactly the same demo with the tree view. Um, the difference here is that we actually use widgets for all the content. So Every cell in this in this grid is uh, a label, and you can use the full power of GTK widgets uh, to display your data. We don't uh, create widgets uh, for the whole model. We only in, uh, create widgets for the visible range. And if you scroll around, we'll recycle the widgets. Uh, so that is all as you would expect. And you might say, well, 33,000 items, that is not very impressive in terms of model size. And you would be correct. Um, so if you want to like see a bit more impressive model sizes, we can switch to this uh, example for uh, for a grid widget, which is also uh, using a, a model, the same kind of model that uh, the column list used, and we can uh, switch the model size to two million items. So now we have a, a data model that contains two million colors, and we can still uh, use this UI fairly comfortably. And one thing we can do here is we can actually sort this. And as you can see, the sorting happens in the background. And, and while it's going on, the UI stays responsive. And that's something that we work pretty hard on and that we are kind of proud of. The same is true for filtering. You can also filter uh, um, a list-based widget in the background, and the UI will stay responsive as the filtering is happening, uh, although this, this demo doesn't show it. One other thing that this demo shows is that we have um, we have selection as well. So you can make a rubber band selection here, and then you can uh, get the data that's behind the selection and do, do things with it, like compute the average color. Usually, if you if you make a big selection, you just end up with something that is either gray or brown. <clears throat> so maybe that's. Um, that's enough for, for list widgets. There's more to explore here. If you if you want to click around yourself, there's more demos uh, highlighting various aspects. But I want to move on um, and talk a bit about painting. And um, that is yes. Traditionally in GTK, whenever we need it, uh, we need content uh, that can be drawn, be that an image loaded from a file or something drawn uh, by code. We end up using GTK PixBuff. In GTK4, we've kind of moved away from GDK PixBuff, we de-emphasized that, and introduced a new interface called uh, GDK Paintable. When you uh, load an image file in GDK4, you end up with a GDK texture object, which implements the Paintable interface. And likewise, when you load a themed icon, you also end up with a Paintable. Paintables can produce different images at different times, uh, so we can also present animations and videos using this interface. One of the Best things about GDK Paintable is that it's a very simple interface, so it's it's very easy to implement yourself. It's really just two or three functions. And so the first example I want to show here is actually a custom uh, implementation of uh, GDK Paintable that overlays an emblem on top of an existing Paintable, and and then you get something like this. In GDK3, we used to have um, support for what we called emblemed icons in GTK theme, but that was a fairly limited thing, and we've got rid of it. And instead, we can now can now use paintables for this. And as you can see, um, since paintables can be animated, and we overlay an arbitrary paintable here, you can now have uh, animated 
MDEVs, which is not something that would be easy to do in GTK3. The next example uh, of a paintable is um, uh, loading an SVG. And you might say, well, GDK Pixpuff could load SVG since forever, so why do we need this? Um, the thing is, if you load an SVG file with GDK Pixpuff, you end up with a Pixpuff, which is just a uh, fixed number of pixels. And if you then change your, your window size, um, you end up with pixelated content because we just scale up uh, those pixels, which is a bit of a bummer considering that the S in SVG stands for scalable. So uh, with a, a paintable wrapper around uh, the lib RSVG handle object, we can finally do better. And as you can see, as I make this window bigger, we actually re-render the SVG at the right size and we get sharp rendering at any size here. And all of this uh, requires just uh, 100 lines of code for, for a fairly trivial implementation of GDK paintable. Right, I already mentioned that paintables can be animated, and uh, that, that is very nice, as we saw in this MDAM example. But if you, if you want to um, show uh, actual media content, such as a WebM file, you typically want some more control over things like the duration or the volume. And for that, we have a separate interface called GTK Media Stream that fills that role. And we have a GTK Video widget which um, adds some of the expected controls in the UI. And I'll show this demo here, which is uh, basically just a window wrapped around the GTK video widget. And as you can see, there's um, typical media controls down here, a volume control and a, a scale that shows you um, the position. And that can render simple animations, but it can also render um, movies that you might want to show. And at the core of this um, uh, GTK video widget, it's just the same machinery that we saw earlier. It's a GTK picture widget displaying a paintable that is changing over time. Right, um, so maybe that's enough uh, for paintables. And if you are still around, you're probably here because you wanted to see wobbly widgets. So um, let's, let's finally go there. And yeah. I, I'll give a brief introduction here. Uh, so in GTK4, we, we use uh, OpenGL for rendering our UI. And in practice, that means uh, we are using shaders for rendering the, the elements of our UI, be that like shadows or gradients or, or whatever we need uh, to put together widgets. And since not everybody may be familiar with OpenGL, I'll quickly say what, um, what shaders are. So shaders are small programs written in a language uh, called GLSL. Uh, that get compiled and uploaded to the GPU. They run on the GPU and basically they get run in parallel for every pixel that you want to render. And they can do um, simple things like just uh, uh, interpolating between different colors or uh, they can do com more complicated things. And uh, since we're using shaders for all our UI uh, elements for GTK itself, we, we figured it's also fairly easy for us to allow applications to use custom shaders, and so that's something we did uh, within the last half year or so. And this demo uh, shows that. It's a little ridiculous and overcrowded because we try to squeeze uh, every possible way to use custom shaders in a UI into this one window. But let's, uh, let's walk through that one by one and see what we have here. The, those colored blobs that you see in the background are, um, are rendered with a shader, so you can just use a shader as an, as an animated background if you want. And then uh, the content of the window is uh, four stacks, uh, which are using uh, shaders for their custom shaders for their transition between the, the different pages in the stack. And I'll, I'll, I'll walk through those in a bit, but I first wanted to say that um, the two, uh, two stacks here on the right uh, show actually the widget they show currently, the current page is um, is done with a shader as well. That's a GTK GL area uh, showing an, an example taken from the shader toy website. And as you can see, as I as I move the mouse over these uh, widgets, there's a there's another there's a wobbly widget effect that is also done with the shader on hover. But now I'll, I'll click um, I'll click here to actually change the page, and you can see that there's a, a swipe transition, or this is called a wind. This stack has something called radio. This one is doing a cross warp, and uh, 
this is the kaleidoscope. And all of these effects are not something that we invented ourselves. There's a website that we found that has has a bunch of these effects ready made and uh, we just uh, copied the shader code from there and um, it basically just works. And all these four stacks contain the same child widgets. And the last one in each stack is the source code for the shader, which you can see here. And you can actually make a change here and you can uh, recompile the shader and, and then use it again and you can see the effect has actually changed. Maybe I need to make this a little slower so you can you can see what's going on. So um, yeah, that, that's uh, fun and uh, I'm sure people will come up with maybe some useful uses for this and a lot of silly uses, but um, the capability is there and um, I'm sure you'll have fun exploring that. Yeah, I think that's maybe enough demos for now. Um, there's, there's of course a lot more here in, in GTK demo. You can see um, we have quite a few demos. Uh, you can explore that yourself if you if you have a build of GTK4. Did my web browser crash while I was demoing? Did you guys miss all the demos or did you see, see a little bit of it? Okay, I'm sorry for that. I, I hope you got a little bit out of it and I'll um, pretend that nothing happens and I'll, I'll um, let me see if I can actually... Uh, yeah, of course, I'm not presenter now anymore, so I guess I'll, I'll have to be made presenter again so I can change the slides. Thank you. So I showed you all of this. Um, and most of this. And before I, I wrap it up, uh, I wanted to take a brief moment um, to talk a bit about what our plans and ideas are for what we'll work on once we release GTK 4.0 next month. So I haven't mentioned accessibility yet in this presentation, but this has been a focus of the GTK team, in particular a focus of Emmanuel for the, for the past year. We had a hackfest with the members of the some members of the accessibility community in February in Brussels. Uh, that was back when conferences involved travel. And since then, um, we've replaced the aging accessibility code in GTK with a new implementation that cuts out several layers of intermediate code and brings us much closer to what web browsers and Qt do in this area nowadays. So that, that was uh, a good step up. For GTK 4.0, the aim in this area is to just have a functional ATSPI backend that can support using GTK4 applications with Orca, the screen reader. But the plans for after 4.0 include um, writing backends for other platforms, which is something that we've never had in GTK. Our accessibility was always Linux only. And with our new, um, with the new code that we have in GTK4 now, uh, it should be a lot easier to write backends for, say, uh, OS X and maybe also on Windows. So that is something that um, will be a first for us. And we're also looking at modernizing the AT SPI uh, layer on Linux. Um, so far, we are using it as is, but it really uh, still smells of Corba, and um, it would be nice to improve on that. 
Yeah, another item, uh, that's one item actually that we had to drop from our GTK4 roadmap because um, accessibility was considered more important than an animation framework. But we have not given up on, on it and we will get back to it once we have 4.0 done. Yes, uh, UI designer. Everybody loves Glade, of course, but um, it is not quite up to par with what other platforms offer in terms of uh, UI design tools. And uh, what's worse, uh, Glade does not currently work with GTK4 because there were a number of changes in the UI file format and um, Glade has not uh, kept up with that. We did introduce a uh, constraint-based layout manager in GTK4, which is meant to facilitate writing a more modern UI designer, but we have not actually gotten around to to doing that yet. Maybe somebody out there wants to beat us to it and show up with a with a new new UI designer. We, we'd love for that to happen. Yes, this next item, replacing GTK Tree View, is a bit of a placeholder for the incomplete uh, cleanups and API modernization tasks that are left inside the, the GTK code base. We did add uh, the new list and grid widgets that I demonstrated a while ago, and they are meant to eventually replace all the cell renderer based widgets uh, like the tree view and the combo box and the icon view. Uh, but we have not actually uh, removed those widgets yet. One of the reasons for that is that we did not want to make porting from GTK3 uh, harder than it already is. And dealing with all the other changes is, is enough work and it's much better if you can first do a GTK4 port and then as a second step, replace uh, your main um, uh, widget, be that a list or a, a grid uh, and replace that with a model-based widget. Another reason is that it's, it's just a lot of work um, to replace all these GTK combo box itself is a beast, uh, GTK tree view itself is a beast, but uh, the others like I can view and combo box also have a lot of features that we kind of need to replace before we can drop them. Yeah, the last item I have put on this uh, on this list of ideas is um, um, that uh, it's not just GTK itself that needs to uh, take advantage of, of uh, new things that we have to offer internally. There's also a a list of other libraries that provide more specialized widgets um, such as WebKit, VTE, or LibG Weather, to name just a few. And, and all those kind of need ported, need to be ported to GTK4. Thankfully, uh, a lot of that porting is, is either done already or it's at least underway. And one of the libraries I wanted to mention here specifically is uh, LibHandy, which in recent years has served as a useful breeding ground for adaptive modern widgets on top of GTK3, while the GTK team was uh, busy working on GTK4. So we are very thankful for the people working on Lipendi that they've kept GTK3 alive and, and modern in that way. But now that, that we have GTK4, uh, we kind of need to take a look at what the future holds for Lipendi and similar libraries such as Elementary's Granite. And um, yes. So currently this list is not really a roadmap, it's it's just a grab bag of ideas really, but we'll have a, and it's not, not exactly clear yet which of these we can do in GTK 4.x and which of these we'll have to wait for GTK 5. Um, in, in fact, we'll have a planning meeting um, to discuss this topic uh, very soon, you know, probably next week or the week after. And um, I'm sure we'll write a, we'll write a blog post uh, with any updates on that. And that is really um, what I had to present here today. I hope the demos I showed um, give you some idea of uh, what's possible to do with GTK4 and make you maybe want to try it out and maybe look at porting some of your applications. And with that, I'll probably open it up for questions. There is some questions. I had difficulty hearing that, but I uh, understand that you really want me to look at the shared notes. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me let me go there. I'll just read the questions as I see them, and we'll try to give you answers. All right. First question: Will GTK4 work on macOS 11.0.1 that got released today? Um, good question. Um, I don't have a Mac myself, 
And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, we're having a new macOS backend that is being worked on, which is um, not quite complete yet, but uh, it's getting there. Christian Hergert is doing that work because he uh, has a Mac at home and uh, was interested in, in taking this up. I assume that uh, once the backend uh, is, uh, is functional, it'll work on macOS 11.0.1, but I, I can't tell you that anybody has had an opportunity to, to verify that in practice yet. Next question. Um, what conclusions from Greg's keynote talk would you bring to GTK? Um, yeah, I'm sorry to say I missed Greg's keynote. I really uh, would have loved to see it, but I was preparing for my talk, so I, I can't, can't really answer that. I'm sorry. I'll have to go back and, and watch the video of that before I can say something. Um, next question. Is Android finally supported for GTK4? Um, no, not as of today. And what I said in one of the slides uh, is that we've simplified our GDK backend interface quite a bit. So in theory, it should be easier now to write an Android backend than it was for GDK3, but uh, so far nobody has um, started to look at that seriously. And um, if anybody's interested in that, I don't think the GDK team itself has the bandwidth to take that on. We are lucky that we have uh, Christian Hergert working on an, a new OS X backend, but uh, we don't really have um, enough people to to produce more backends by ourselves. I mean, if anybody else wants to show up, we'd be very happy to, to help out and, and guide any efforts. Next question. Will theming change any in GTK4? Um, not significantly. I think our CSS support in GTK3 was already um, more or less at the same level uh, than it is now in GTK4. If anything, we've probably removed a few um, custom things that um, were not necessary anymore because we now support more of the standard the CSS mechanisms for doing things. But um, basically the theming is all the same. You have a, a CSS style sheet um, and widgets have element names and can have style classes and all that is unchanged from GTK3. Next question. Who are GTK developers? Keen hobbyists, paper Red Hat, something else? Um, uh, we have both. Um, we have uh, people who are paid by Red Hat and are paid to work on GTK. And we have some people who also work at Red Hat, but work on GTK as their hobby. And we have people who do not work at Red Hat. For instance, Emanuele is uh, employed by the GNOME Foundation as a developer to work on GTK and other things. And Yes, um, so it's a, it's a small team, of, uh, I would say between five and 10 people who regularly contribute to, uh, to GTK and a larger group of people who are um, filing issues and sometimes um, provide fixes as well. Uh, next question, is there a Vulkan backend? So um, yes, um, maybe I'll, I'll step back a little bit here to say um, there's two different things here. We have um, uh, GDK has backends for different platforms. As I said earlier, we have an OS X backend for, that's essentially the windowing system part of, of GTK that, um, where we have uh, one backend for each platform. There's a Windows backend, there's a, uh, an X11 backend, there's a Wayland backend, and we have a backend for, called Broadway for rendering um, GTK UIs um, in a web browser. And that's, the, and that's the windowing part, and then there's a a renderer, which is uh, basically um, determines how we render. And uh, I, I said we are using OpenGL now, so that's done by the GL renderer. And we do have a Vulkan renderer as well, which is um, somewhat less complete. So for 4.0, I think the GL renderer will be our primary best supported renderer. We do have a Cairo renderer as well, which is the, the renderer that gets used as fallback when we don't have uh, hardware acceleration available. Um, yes, but the Vulkan, Vulkan render is a little less uh, mature maybe than the GL one. And um, part of the problem here is that we as GTK developers are not really expert, experts in using any of these APIs. So we are not game developers who, who have extensive knowledge in, in how GL works or how Vulkan works. So we are kind of feeling our way into these APIs and, and do as best as we can, but Vulkan, is, is not an easy API to, to handle in this fashion. So if anybody uh, has experience using Vulkan, 
and doing Vulcan development and helping out with the Vulcan backend would be very much appreciated. All right, next question. Could GTK4 demo be added to Flathub as a flat pack? I feel that would build hype and let's let the developers get hands on it even easier. I think that's a great idea. We do actually ship, um, we do have flat pack builds of, uh, of our demo apps, both of GTK demo and of Widget Factory. They are uh, available from, from gitlab.gnome.org. But uh, putting them on, on FlatHub sounds like a great idea. We should look into that. Next question. What is the GTK4 MM status? Um, I'll take that question a little more generally uh, and talk about bindings in general. So um, there's a lot of bindings for GTK that has always been one of our strengths. Um, and the GTK team does not have the bandwidth to work on them ourselves. Um, we, we can provide the introspection data, like the GUR file that um, all the uh, G object introspection based bindings are using. And, and we try to keep those up to date and um, fix any, uh, any binding API issues that people point out to us. But we, we don't really have the bandwidth to work on, on bindings ourselves. So I don't actually know if anybody is working on, on porting GTK MM to GTK4. Um, uh, so I can't, can't really answer that. I do know that people are um, fixing up the um, PyG object bindings. Um, there's some overrides in there that need adjustments for GTK4. And I think that's actively being worked on. And uh, I think we hope to have working Python bindings at least for 4.0. Next question, GTK5. How long is GTK4 meant to last? So um, as, I, as I alluded to in, in my presentation, we will have a planning meeting with the core GTK team um, in the next week or two, where I guess this topic will be discussed. Um, so I don't really have a firm answer on this yet. My own, my own opinion on this is that we should probably aim for um, what we said when we, when we started GTK4 work, we, we said we'll have GTK4 in two years. And it turned out uh, that that estimate was wrong. Uh, to nobody's surprise, we took twi twice as long. It has taken us four years now. I think that was probably a little bit too long in retrospect. And I would hope that we can do a GTK5 a little sooner, but um, it's an estimate, so you know how to take it. Next question, um, what's the future of Cairo? Uh, good question. Maybe some of you saw, uh, saw um, that pop up on Hacker News this morning. I, I'm struggling um, to find somebody to do a Cairo release that we, we kind of need because we want some of the bug fixes in the font rendering that are in Cairo Master, but have not seen a release, even though they have been merged more than, well, more than a year ago. And um, currently still struggling to figure out who I can convince to upload a Cairo tarball. So um, Cairo development is not entirely dead. There's people who are committing things, but I, I'm currently struggling to find a maintainer who, who can do an actual release because as things stand, most Linux distributions still ship Cairo 116, which is uh, almost three years old now, I think. And the latest development snapshot, 117.2, is also one and a half years old now. So um, things are not looking too bright in Cairo. And um, we'll have to figure out um, what we can do there. Um, we certainly, it's more palatable now than, than it was in the past to use other rendering APIs with, with GTK. Um, we don't, our, our draw callback that we had in GTK3 was taking a Cairo context. So basically you were forced to use Cairo and that is no longer the case in GTK4. We have a, uh, a snapshot vfunk that replaces the draw vfunk in GTK3 and that does not take a Cairo context. It takes a, a thing called a GTK snapshot object to which you add the render nodes that make up your scene graph. And if you want, you can, you can create a Cairo render node which will then give you a Cairo context to do Cairo drawing but uh, it's no longer um, a expected part of the of the snapshot API. So in, in, in principle, we are slowly uh, reducing our dependency on Cairo, but um, it's certainly still very common to render things using Cairo in GDK applications. So we still need that Cairo release. Um, next question, is it possible to develop GTK using other lengths like Rust or Go? I think there's, there's two answers to that. The first one, the, the, the first question here is, is it possible to write applications, uh, GTK applications in other languages? 
And for that, the answer is uh, a very definitive yes. We have, as I said, a lot of bindings, and in particular, there's Rust bindings being actively developed currently, and there's bindings for many other languages on the GTK website. Uh, and as those bindings um, get adapted to GTK4, you'll be able to write GTK4 applications in any of those languages. As to whether uh, you can develop GTK itself uh, using other languages, uh, for that the answer currently is we stick to we stick to C because that's the the universal universal uh, language that makes binding to any other language uh, relatively easy. Now, whether we in the future want to consider allowing Rust code in the GTK code base as long as it has a, uh, a C uh, API exported, that uh, is to be seen. I'm sure that people would be interested in doing that.